The 17th century was a time when practically everyone in Europe and the Middle East was expecting the Messiah to come. There's a mass messianic hysteria with people prophesizing in crowds in public. You needed just one spark for the entire powder keg to blow. And that is what happened with Shabtai Tzvi. In Smyrna, as a teenager, he began toying with practical Kabbalistic ideas, challenging his rabbis and starts wondering, am I the Messiah? The Jewish authorities there don't love this, so they kick him out of his hometown and he starts traveling from city to city, sometimes making an impact, sometimes getting banished, sometimes both. He ends up in Jerusalem. Now, at the time, it was a poor, tiny community and they loved him there. He was charismatic and he had a beautiful voice. He was quite possibly the first person to set Jewish songs to the melodies of other cultures. And we're not just talking Adon Olam here. They gave him the high honor of raising money for the Jerusalem Jewish community. So he starts regularly moving between Cairo and Jerusalem. Once on his way back, he stops by Nathan of Gaza, who's an important Kabbalist. Shabtai tells him about his swinging mood changes and that he wants help correcting his soul, what practical Kabbalists were known for. Nathan of Gaza quickly comprehends that the numeric value of the letters composing Shabtite's full name is the same as several messianic references in the Bible and says, sorry, you don't need correcting because you are the Messiah. Shabtai? loves this idea, and together they head to Jerusalem. And there, in public, he declares himself as the Messiah. We're going to make a fast day, the 9th of Av, a time for feasting. Why mourn? We're just on the verge of rebuilding the temple. Some were turned off, but many people started believing him. So why? Here's the main theory. In Jerusalem in 1665, they likely weren't aware of the Chmelniki massacre, where eight years previous, an estimated 100,000 Jews were killed in Ukraine. So it probably wasn't looking for a person to give them hope following that. And it also most likely wasn't due to the influence of Lurianic Kabbalah, as that branch of Kabbalism didn't become widely popular until a bit later. Rather, it was simply the ubiquitous messianic fervor in the culture at that time, people deeply believed the Messianic age was coming. Shabtai offered hope, saying, we'll reconquer the land of Israel and redistribute it among the resurrected 10 tribes. And Nathan writes many, many Jewish communities spreading the word. The Ottoman Sultan gets heebie-jeebies of the reports of what's going on and has Shabtai come to Istanbul. So if this guy is the Messiah, he's on his side. And if he's not, then he'll shut him down to keep the peace in the empire. Riding in on a horse with a saber on his side, notably two acts prohibited to Jews in all dimmies at that time, he enters the city and is surrounded by hundreds of people confident that he's the Messiah. This time, in 1666, we have heavy evidence that most of Jews in the diaspora, from Yemen to Amsterdam, are believers in Shabtai Tzvi. Synagogues had prayers for him. His picture was printed next to King David's in many prayer books with an inscription, Save Our People. And Jews who opposed him said, we are living in messianic times, but Shabtai Tzvi is not the Messiah. But they couldn't say this out loud as they'd be beaten. Sephardic and Ashkenazic Jews had a similar response. Sabbatinism helped unite the diaspora, showing that both sides had the same issues and expectations and the same messianic craze. These were Jewish communities that had never spoken to each other before. So the Sultan calls him in and says, people say you're the Messiah, which means you're immortal. Shabtite says, Maybe, maybe not. So let me do this, says the Sultan. I'll have my archers hit you with their arrows. If you die, so be it. You're an imposter. But if you don't, you are the Messiah and I'll bow down to you. Shabtite apparently says, is there an alternative? And the alternative is converting to Islam. We don't know exactly what happened, but Shabtite leaves the palace proudly wearing a fez, having converted. Now, Nathan of Gaza doesn't let a little thing like their messiah switching religions stop the movement. He gets ahead of it and writes letters across the diaspora saying Shabtai is still the messiah. 
The function of the Messiah is to redeem holy sparks throughout the world, and only the Messiah can go to the dark side. Islam, the 1660s were a bit less PC than now, to redeem sparks from even there. Most Jews don't buy this. They're shocked and wondered how they can atone for the sin of believing in him. They fast and do self-flagellation. And they remove evidence of him having been such a big deal from the histories, reframing it as just some crazy blip. But others consider his conversion a martyrdom of sorts. What he taught is now more true than ever because he willingly sacrificed himself. After he converts, Shabtai lives in a Turkish palace under house arrest with his disciples by his side, and people from all over the diaspora flock to him, their messiah. Despite converting, he still sang Jewish songs, ate kosher, and celebrated the holidays, declaring it was Shabbat on whatever day of the week he saw as fit. Some followed him in converting to Islam, the Danma. They secretly practiced Jewish traditions within Islam. This group lasted for hundreds of years. In the 1920s, they numbered 15,000. And in 1676, 10 years after he converted, Shabtai died. His disciples kept spreading the idea of Sabbatianism, leading to a line of messianic figures to follow. But the rest of the Jewish world, most Jews, needed to do something with the Kabbalistic legacy he used and abused. There was a search for how to follow Kabbalah properly now. And a hundred years later, Hasidic Judaism would provide that answer. It came not necessarily to get rid of the messianic ideas in Kabbalah, but rather to interpret them in a completely different, more kosher light. To learn how and why Hasidic Judaism began, changing the face of Judaism with it, watch the next video in this series. Make sure to subscribe for when future videos come out, and if you're interested in supporting me making more videos like this one, please click the link below in the video description. Thank you for watching.